Elhamdülillahi ve kefa ve salatu ve selam ala men esteba ve alihi ve sahbihi ve men vala. To proceed, being we live in a time of much confusion, a time where there's so much differences amongst the people, even amongst ulama, scholars, mashayikh, duat, people that ascribe to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should all strive according to our capability to educate ourselves concerning the asbab al-khilaf, the root causes for differences, especially those differences that have become widespread, those differences that you cannot turn a blind eye for. And this is done with a sincere intention, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids us to support those who have been oppressed and not to support those who are oppressing others and to be able to know right from wrong. So from the fitnas and the differences that has taken place and become widespread is what has transpired in Yemen between the mashayikh there. And when we understand how things began It'll make it really easy for us to understand how it has reached to what we know of today of the fitna. So, inshallah, bear with me, I'm going to clarify how it all started. And this fitna in Yemen, it dates back to the year 2006. I was there present, and I seen how it was before things transpired with... uh, between the mashayikh there, in particular Sheikh Yahya al-Hajuri, Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Adini, and others that we're going to clarify in upcoming series. So this fitna, there were characters that were involved. Already before, there was unity amongst the mashayikh. There was well-known characters that got involved and wanted to cause harm to the da'wah and the maj because of what they had of animosity towards Sheikh Yahya and also due to their menhaj, their methodology that they're upon. And these are individuals that are known to be fitna makers in various of lands up until today. None other than Ali al-Hudayfi, Ahani bin Buraik, Arafat al-Muhammadi. These individuals and so on, those who have joined them, Muhammad Ghalib, they were from the main figures of the fitna in Yemen. And these same people, later on, after they were, they were done with the fitna of Yemen, they went on to Saudi Arabia and caused a fitna there amongst the mashayikh and the du'at. And they are people, once we understand their history, we're going to understand why they enter a land, they cause division and havoc. So I'm going to clarify this, inshallah. First, I want to begin of the position of Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Adini prior to the fitna with Sheikh Yahya and prior to for him inclining to these individuals, Arafat, Hani bin Buraik, uh, Muhammad Ghalib, these Yemenis that were known prior to the fitna to be individuals that were bringing harm because with their words, and even some of them were known to be harmful in the time of Sheikh Mubal, rahimahullah, that Sheikh Mubal had to reprimand some of them, in particular Ali Hudayfi. So these were people that had this, these uh, characteristics with them. So I'll play here an audio of Sheikh Abdurrahman Adani of his words concerning Sheikh Yahya. <laughs> So Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Adani, he was asked, 
What do you know about Sheikh Yahya al-Hajuri? So he said, this is a good question. He is from the ulama, the noble scholars of this land. And we're going to play, we're going to fast forward. So he mentions that Sheikh Yahya, the goodness that he has, has become manifested and widespread, and that he is from the seniors of the Mashaikh of Yemen. And he mentions no one denies his merits except someone that is uh, an envious character or someone that has malice for him and for the da'wah, this blessed da'wah. So these are the words of Abdurrahman al-Adani prior to the fitna. And likewise, there were praises from Sheikh Yahya for Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Adani. So these individuals, they came, Su'at al-Fitin, they're known to strive to cause ruckus and havoc and chaos amongst the people. And we're going to clarify that, inshallah. They, these are individuals that wanted to use Abdurrahman al-Adani for their hidden agenda of causing division and separation in Yemen, which unfortunately Abdurrahman al-Adani was taken by and fell into their ropes of deception. And we're going to see that further, inshallah. So these individuals, along with the people that they had, uh, various of acquaintees, came and tried to uh, get Abdurrahman Adini to establish a markaz, uh, a new center of knowledge in Aden. So the method of the approach that Sheikh Abdurrahman Adini went to build his markaz, his new markaz, was different from the approach of all the mashaykh in Yemen from the time of Sheikh Mubin Rahim Allah that they would do so and they wouldn't cause any division from one markaz to another. But what happened is that he was doing something called tisjil, recording and registering people for his new markaz. So he was registering through these people that they have from Aden, a various of people who he had delegated. So And they were going to, particular individuals that were known to be qualified teachers and who had classes and the maj offering them this opportunity and saying to them it's, it's a better an atmosphere and better this so this approach was very different and it was causing harm to the re- initial institute of the maj that was running and we know that if this was done anywhere else this would cause division so it's not an approach that to go to an institute and to take its teachers and to offer them another place or to go to its students and offer them another place, but just to open and whoever comes to you comes to you of whatever you have to offer. So Sheikh Yahya al-Hajuri, he sent a letter of words of advice to Abdurrahman al-Adani, Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Adani, and all those who are representing this registration. So here I'll read the letter. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Min Yahya al-Hajuri ila akhina al-Mukram al-Sheikh al-Fadil Abdurrahman al-Adini. Look at these wordings. He says, from Yahya al-Hajuri to our honorable brother, the noble Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Adini. He says, Wasair al-Ikhwa. Mandubi at Tisjil, Hafidu Kumullah, Salamu Alikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatu. And he says to the rest of those who are in charge about the affair of registration, he says, May Allah preserve you all. And he starts with a greeting. And then he says, Amma Ba'd. So this is from the first of letters that Sheikh has sent to them concerning their approach that they were doing. He says, فَقَدْ أَخْبَرَنِي كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْإِخْوَةِ لَفَاضِلْ أَنَّكُمْ حَفِذُكُمُ اللَّهِ تَأَلَّمْتُمْ مِمَّا قُلْتُهُ عَنِ التَّسْجِيلِ الْمَعْرُوفِ لَدَيْكُمْ 
And before I read Shekhar at first, that it was a Duhar time, I was there. He, after calling Sheikh Abdurrahman Adini and advising him about it in private and not seeing any change, and they were continuous with the uh, Tisjil, recording names inside the market itself and registering where it was causing some sort of split in the markets of are you going to stay here or are you going to go with us come with us don't stay here this place has its uh, defects its disadvantages so on and so forth that what they were saying so Sheikh spoke openly about this and that this is wrong on uh, the time and saying that he advised Sheikh Abdurrahman Adini about it in private but you know uh, a veil it, it was continuous so he warned from this type of approach. Then after that, he sent this uh, letter. When he reached the Sheikh Yahya, that these people were really bothered by his speech. So Sheikh Yahya says, فَقَدْ أَخْبَرِنِي كَثِيرٌ مِنِ الْإِخْوَادِ الْأَفَاضِلْ أَنَّكُمْ حَفِظَكُمُ اللَّهَ تَعَلَّمْتُمْ إِمَّا قُلْتُهُ عَنِ التَّسْجِيلِ الْمَعْرُوفِ لَدَيْكُمْ He said, many of the noble brothers, may Allah preserve you all, have informed me that you have been uh, hurt by what I've said concerning the registration that is found with you. So he says, وَحِبُّ أَنْ أُبْرِزْ لَكُمْ فِي هَذِي الرِّسَالَ مُوجِبْ إِنْكَارِ لِلْتَسْجِيلِ المذكور. He said, I wish to clarify in this letter what uh, led me to criticize this uh, registration or this uh, aforementioned approach of recording people in the markets. الذي كنت المحت إن لم أكون قد صرحت لأخينا عبد الرحمن بالبعد عنه. He says that which I indirectly, if not uh, directly, to I said to my brother Abd Rahman, Sheikh Abd Rahman Al Adni, to be distant from. في تلك الجلسة التي حضرها الإخوة الأفاضل in the sitting that noble brothers attended, such as Kamal Al Adni, Abu Dhahda Al Hajuri, and Hassan Al Khawlani. Where he sat with Sheikh Abdul Rahman and he gave some words of advice. Also, he did send Sheikh Jamil in private to advise him about this approach. And this is all in the Maj. It's clarifying what Malahar min Mafasid, Hadha Tasjil, of what the harm that can come. And uh, so he mentions, now these are from the points that he points out, of the harm of this approach that they're doing inside the institute. He said, أَوَّلًا فَتْبَابَ الْلَفِيفِ وَعَدَمَ التَّمْيِيزِ فِي الدَّعْوَى He said, firstly, this form of registration is going to lead to not being distinct in one's call or one's sentence. So Shaykh clarifies how it could be that people could register in their names and then later on it could be a, they could appear as harmful characters in the markis, the center. Because the origin is that people are to join these centers and these institutes after being recommended or being introduced by someone that is known or having some type of referral. But giving this registration that is open. It, then he says, the second point, he says this tasjil was established from the very first of it, from what people were doing of it, from what's apparent was al-dunyawiyah. People were mainly doing it to buy, purchasing land that was cheap. So they can later on do business with it. So a land that was initially established for a da'wah and center, it was made cheap for students, poor students to purchase so they can live there to learn. People that were businessmen purchasing lands to in order for to make business out of it and sell it for a higher price. So the Sheikh was warning from this. So he mentions that this is a contrast to how the other Marakis of Yemen were established. And it's free from the negative effects that we're seeing now from your approach. And also he mentions the four, fifth point that this has led to people that have enmity towards the da'wah find this as an opportunity to even spread chaos and fitna more by using this 
controversy of registration. And number six, he says, أن مشاكل ما قد يتوقع من المهاترات على الأراضي كما حصل للبكر وأصحابه تعود أثقالها على كواهل من تعلمون من علماء السنة يعني here he mentions that the difference that may occur because of the disputes of lands as will happen prior to previous fitness of Salih Bakri's Marquis a man who caused fitness in the past it may come back so the ulama have to deal with it so he mentions he said my repetitive advice for you O noble sheikh and all those who are involved in this to excuse themselves from this method of approach of registration return their wealth back to the people وَالتَّخَلُّسْ مِنْ رِبْغَةْ هَذَا الْمَأْزِقَ الْكَائِدْ لَكُمْ And to rid yourself from this type of uh, slip that is going to be a plot against you and your da'wah and build a marquis like how other marquis are built upon brotherly love and unity and between your fellow brothers and your mashayah. This is better uh, for your da'wah than this approach that you're taking that he mentioned is going to bring more harm. And then he just said, uh, making dua uh, for tawfiq, and he said, كَتَبَهُ أَخُوكُمْ مُحِبُّ الْخَيْرِ لَكُمْ كَمَا يَعْلَمُ اللَّهِ يَحْيَى الْحَجُورِ It's been written by your brother that loves you, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, يَحْيَى الْحَجُورِ So these are from the first things of advice concerning this affair. And it was just nasiha, it was just nasiha. So from the things that happened was the Mashaykh of Yemen got involved, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Imam, Sheikh Muhammad Somali, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Burai, these Mashaykh, they came to the Maj and they did a, a, a gathering to resolve the issue and they are then they advised about this approach of how Muhammad Abdurrahman Adini is establishing his marquis, that it was wrong. Once again, they had another ijtima' in the year, in the year 1428, on the fourth month, on the twelfth day. And after their gathering with Abdurrahman Adini there, from what they said in their clarification, their bayan they wrote, is وَشَكَرُوا الشَّيْخِ يَحْيَى عَلَى مَا يَقُومُ بِهِ مِنْ خِدْمَتِهِ وَدِفَاعِهِ عَنِ الدَّعْوَ السَّلَفِيَةِ إِذْ أَنَّهُ لَا يَتَكَلَّمْ بِدَافِعِ الْحَسَدِ وَلَا بِدَافِعِ الْحِقْدِ And that they were grateful to, to Sheikh Yahya for what he has done of services in protecting the Awa For really he doesn't speak from the perspective of envy. You know, those people that say he was just, they were just jealous of uh, Abu Abdurrahman Adri's markets, they clarified there that wasn't, or out of hatred, وَلَا بِدَافِعَ الرَّغْبَ فِي إِسْقَاطَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ Nor if those who were just remove people out of Ahl al-Sunnah. وَإِنَّ وَبِدَافِعَ الْغَيْرَ عَلَى السُنَّةِ وَأَهْلِهَا But rather from the perspective of having jealousy for the Sunnah and his people. And uh, from those who signed to this bayan, yeah, there were seven mashayikh, from the Mashaykh of Yemen, and from them was Abdurrahman al Adini signed. Uh, as, uh, sorry, the seven Mashaykh of Yemen, here it says, and then the eighth one that signed was Abdurrahman al Adini who signed to it. From what uh, a paper that also was written by Abdurrahman al Adini on that uh, gathering is the following. He says, Wa inni abra ila Allah min kulli ta'usu bin jahili. وَمِنْ كُلِّ مَا يَكُونُ سَبَبًا فِي تَمْزِيقُ الصَّفْ وَتَشْتِيتِ الشَّمَلْ سَوَانْ كَانَ هَذَا التَّعَصُّبْ لِي أَوْ لِغَيْرِي Because the Mashaykh, we're going to play an audio for Shaghir, where he mentions that the Mashaykh advised Abdurrahman Adini, and he wrote a letter. He says, I free myself from every ignorant form of ta'asub, fanaticism, and anything that causes differing in the, or splitting of the ranks 
and causing disunity. Whether this is based upon fanaticism, that a person is a fervent supporter for him or for other than him, he says. And I'm going to play an audio with Sheikh the year 2007 and May 15, where he speaks about this gathering. وأفادوا في ما كتبوا أنهم طلبوا منه بيان موقفه مما نقل عن مما نقل أنه سبب تعصبا بين الطلاب. So شيخها mentions. That the Mashaikh, when they gathered at that time, they clarified that this, that he's the action that he took and approach, caused these differences amongst the students being fanatically attached uh, and taking sides. <laughs> وذكروا يزاهم الله خيرا أنهم ناصحوا بل قالوا ناصحنا حتى تعبنا ورهقنا and they mentioned the مشايخ that they advised him and they said rather we advised him until we became exhausted وهذا يشكرون عليه وكتب الأخ عبد الرحمن ورقة قرأها علي شيخ عبد العزيز على الهاتف. So the sheikh said they're to be thanked for what advising him, and he mentioned that Abdurrahman Adini wrote a paper there then, and Abdul Aziz Burai, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Burai, read this paper to me over the phone. ودعا فيها أيضا إلى أنه لا يرضى بالتعصب له ولا لغيره. And he mentioned that from what Abdurrahman Adini wrote, as we read earlier, that he's not pleased with anyone being fanatically attached to him or to other than him. So Sheikh Yair says, in reality, what has occurred is that people were fanatically attached to him and he knew of it. وفي المجلس الأول الذي كان هنا في دماج طرح في الجلسة ما حصل من أسباب ذلك وكان النصح لعبد الرحمن. And also in the first gathering with the مشايخ in دماج before that gathering in معبر is that what was brought up and discussed was the causes for this type of division. And uh, Abdurrahman Adini was advised in that gathering. Sheikh mentioned also from what he called that he called for establishing that the da'wah is to be one and he says in all of this that what he's uh, urging for and what he wrote it doesn't have anything of him apologizing for all of this differences and division that he caused or excusing himself uh, from this affair by apologizing. Because 
قد اتصلت لهم او اخبرتهم ذلك ان الكلام الذي ذكر فيه يحتاج الى ان يذكر الاخ عبد الرحمن اعتذارا So Sheikh mentioned there and then to the Mashaikh that Abdurrahman Adani needs to add in, on this paper before it's published that he should uh, apologize or admit his wrong. But really, the Sheikh has mentioned a lot of harm has occurred to the Marquis there in Damaj and also in, in the city of Aden, where even Sheikh, some of his tapes were being. Uh, banned, and some people have Shagha was spoken highly of, they'll be boycotted, or any of this sort, just because people began to take sides of being with Abdurrahman Adani, of with this whole approach of all this controversy of the registration. Allah <laughs> العبر لمن حصل منه ما يحتاج أن يعتذر فيه فقال الشيخ محمد نحن الآن انتقلنا إلى قضية عبد الله قلنا so الشيخ محمد عبد الرحاب الصابي replied شيخ ياسين uh, that we're now discussing about the second issue of controversy which is the affair of عبد الله المرعي the brother of Durhan Adani, whose his issue also escalated with the whole speech concerning Abdurrahman Adani's affair. So Shekha mentioned that being you know, this uh, affair is not completed, the affair with relation to Abdurrahman Adini, and you gather to establish sulh to rectify the affair, then complete it with these very last steps that are found therein. <laughs> And the Sheikh said, all of a sudden, I found out that that paper was already distributed. Because uh, in the answer that Sheikh Yahya got from Muhammad al he said he was going to speak to the Mashayikh. And then suddenly, he finds out that the paper of Abdurrahman that doesn't have uh, him admitting his wrong or apologizing is uh, been distributed and published. <laughs> اتصلت للشيخ الصومالي وكان ايضا اتصال عندهم جميعا ولهم في الحقيقة انا ما كنت موافقا على نشر تلك الورقة بغير اعتذار الشيخ هذا then called شيخ محمد الصومالي from the sheikh that was gathered there and said uh, I was not uh, in agreement for this paper to be distributed without him admitting his wrong and apologizing as from the reasons that these people will continuously cause harm and using this issue as a way to divide if Abdurrahman Adili does not admit that he was in the wrong and Sheikh was right for advising him about his approach. <laughs> قد عمل خلاف الصواب وقلقل وكذا فالمأمول أنكم تكملون هذا الموضوع الشيخ هذا مانشد الجود بوينت هي سيز وي هاف بروكسيمالي ا يير او مور وير وي بين ادفايزين ابوت ذس توبيك اند بيبل هاف كازن ديستربنس ابوت ات سو اتس وات از هايلي انكورج فروم يو از ذات يو جايز كومبليت ذس ايشو باي ريكويستين فور هيم تو اميت هيز رونغ قالوا هذه خطوة أولى وبعدها خطوات والذي أريد أن أقول So they responded to Sheikh Yair saying this is the first uh, step and there's going to be further steps after it 
هي أن الورقة التي كتبها الأخ عبد الرحمن وفقنا الله وإياه ليس فيها اعتذار فأنا أطالبه بالاعتذار So Shekhar mentions that what he's saying now is that being that the paper that was published, it doesn't have this, so he's requesting from Abdurrahman, may Allah grant him success, that he admits his wrong and apologize for what has happened. من حيث أن هذا الطلب تخمت به فتنة المغرضين بإذن الله عز وجل. And he says this request of mine that of him to admit his wrong of what he was initially a cause for, it is something considered to those who he actually hear it. For verily, it by way of it, it will be a reason to extinguish this fitna of people that have desires to have uh, hidden agendas to cause harm by way of it. And we mentioned up earlier some of those characters such as Hani bin Buraik, Ali Hudayfi, Arafat, those in the characters that found a way to lit a fire of fitna through this affair. But unfortunately, Abdurrahman Adini did not fulfill this request of admitting his wrong despite the Mashaikh at that time mentioned that his approach that he ta- has taken in establishing his markaz caused division and it caused a fitna inside a, a markaz with so many students of knowledge and even affected other places of cities. So he, it was this affair that led to the fitna to continue. To continue. So Sheikh Yahya began to warn Abdurrahman Adini from some of the people that are with him and inciting him to these affairs and who's going to cause fitna. And Shaykh gave a general advice even to the people of Aden about these individuals to be cautious of, in particular Ali Hudayfi. <laughs> غير أفكار من أخبر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عنهم بقوله المؤمن للمؤمن كالبنيان يشد بعضه بعضا غير أفكار. So Sheikh mentions that he gives advice for the people to be cautious from the ideologies of Ali Hudayfi. Really, his his ideologies are not from the point of view of the Hadith. المؤمن للمؤمن كالبنيان the believer to a believer is like a reinforced structure. الدعوة السلفية والسلفيين أفكار تعصيبية أفكار تعصيبية هذا حاصله ونسأل الله التوفيق لما يحب ويرضى. So he mentions that his thoughts and what he's inclined to Ali Hudayfi is not of that which of Salafiya but rather to cause division and people to take sides amongst uh, as groups and this is the summary of it so the shaykh made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates that which is correct for the people and grant them success so shaykh had warned Abdurrahman al-Adani from these in characters that were became his companions such as Ali Hudayfi Hani bin Buraig Arafat uh, these other individuals that we're going to mention their names, Muhammad Ghalib, and we're going to see even more, where later on, Abdurrahman Adini is the same person that regrets, is going to regret working with these individuals, but doesn't admit, even in the long run, that Sheikh had warned him from these people, and that all this time it was an advice that was true, and it later on became clear. So this individual, Ali Hudayfi, he opened up a website, him and his uh, companions, Arafat, who's known as the nickname Arafat al-Barmaki, Hali bin Buraik, these individuals, Muhammad Ghalib, and some of these other uh, the Adinis that were with them. They opened up a website. 
called Muntadayat al Wahyain. First, uh, it was established in Dar al Hadith with Shihr. They had a website uh, using the website, official website for Abdurrahman Adani's brother, Abdullah al Mar'i. And they had an, a list of uh, anonymous names they were using to uh, refute the Maj, to defend themselves, supposedly. And most of all the names, there's even screenshots of anonymous names on the website. And then they stop and they end up opening the website, Muntadayat al Wahyin, the forum called al Wahyin. And we'll read some speech of Ali Hudayfi admitting this affair. So here's some speech that Ali Hudayfi, he wrote in an article of his. He says, وَبَعْدَ مُدَّةٍ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِمُنْتَدَى الْوَحْيَيْنِ He said, after a time period, Allah made it easy to establish the forum, Al-Wahyayn, لِتُرُدَّ عَلَيْهِمْ To refute them, meaning the people of the students of the Maj, وَاتَّرَّ الْإِخْوَى أَنْ يَكْتُبُوا فِي مُنْتَدَى الْوَحْيَيْنِ بِأَسْمَاء مَجْهُولَ دِفَاعًا عَنِ الْفُضَلَى He says, and the fellow brothers were forced to post on this forum with anonymous names to defend the virtuous ones. SubhanAllah. And they had to take this approach, writing with anonymous names. This is their excuse. They say we're defending the truth, so we're going to write with mysterious names and not mention who we really are. And this is what they had. They had anonymous names. We, we didn't know who they were for so much for a long period of time. And they say, وَكَشْفًا لِحَقِيقَةِ الْحَجُورِ To expose the reality of Hajuri. That's why they opened the website. وَمِنْ مَعُهُ And of those along with him. فَكَانَ الْبُرْعِي يَرَى أَنَّ مُنْتَدَ الْوَحْيَيْنِ سَبَبُ فِتْنَةً And at that time, Abdul Aziz Bur'i, seeing that that forum was a cause of fitna. And this is a forum that Abdul Rahman Adini and Abdullah Mar'i were aware of at that time. It was in support for them. And some of the mashaykh of that time, they considered it to be a cause of fitna. So here we're going to listen to some words that while this is occurring, the fitna of Abdurrahman Adini escalates. There then, Shaykhia speech to, regarding Abdurrahman begins to become more harsh because Shaykhia is realizing that he's silent about many of these affairs and quotes are coming where he's acknowledging what's happening and even taking masajid there's, it's been documented and proven that this group that was with Abdurrahman Adani and what they have taken over uh, from 2007 over 16 masajid at the beginning of those years by force and by causing havoc and ruckus they have taken from people that they deem to be a supporter of Sheikh Yahya and not a supporter of Abdurrahman Adani and they would justify this. So they were warning from the Maj. They were taking Masajid by force. And even followers from the Abu Hassan Ma'ribi, where their names have been documented, 20 individuals by name joined uh, the followers of Abdurrahman Adani, who were known for being the followers of Abu Hassan Ma'ribi. It was a lot of strange behavior occurring where they would bring they were bringing uh, sheikhs from Saudi Arabia to get involved to uh, for this fitna as a way to defend themselves to attack the Maj and Sheikh and who they've got was Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabari and we're going to speak about that inshallah in the upcoming series of his role and how he got involved, and what did he use at the very beginning? To, uh, so this is very important to pay attention to. And then from what Ali Hudayfi says in his article, he says, "وَكَانَ سَبَبُ وَقُوفِنَا مَعَ بِدْرَحْمَانِ فِي قَضِيَةِ الْحَجُورِ." He mentions that one of the reasons why we were on the side of Abdurrahman al Adini during the case of uh, Sheikh Yahya against him. He says because Sheikh Yahya and them declared him to be an innovator. 
And Sheikh Yahya did not declare him to be a Hizbi until he really see it from him by his partisanship of causing uh, division and having wala bara dayyik, the mufikra mukharifa. But really it was known at the very beginning, it was agreed upon that he was in the wrong for his approach of causing all the split in the markiz and his division and people divided and people even getting physical into fights. Just admit that this is wrong and end this fitna. But he persisted and persisted and in a differing expanded. And he was willing to do wala and bara upon that and to the point that people even divided in masajids of local masajids of different areas. And people were uh, giving, being given a fatwa, you can't drive students no more to the maj, that their earning is haram. All of this, when this became apparent, and the advices were landing on deaf ears, there then Sheikh Yahya gave the ruling that this is hizbiyya. But really, uh, this is opposing some of the usul of Ahl Sunnah, which is unity, and uh, avoiding iftiraq, uh, difference and division in the ranks of Ahl Sunnah. And the shan al the affair of the hizbiyin and the innovators, is that they divide the people. And also, the affair of wala wal bara, that if a person has a narrow version of wala bara for an opposition or ideology, for an ideology that's in opposition to the book and the sunnah, then this is a hizbiya, Sheikh Mubarak Rahim al defined it. Al wala, al hizbiya, wala wal bara dayya, li fikra mukhalifa. So it's been clear that all this that has uh, taken place, it all initiated from something that Abdurrahman Adini did in the wrong. Er, no one could say otherwise that what happened, that how he started all that, that he was correct. Everyone agreed at the very beginning he was wrong, but he persisted and he had these supporters from Arafat and Hanib bin Buraik and these type of individuals that know how to speak and deceive their followers to getting a huge crowd and going ahead with it and uh, doing what they did in Yemen by getting different mashayikh of Saudi to support them. Then, along with that, and from the things that made Sheikh Ayah realize that Abdurrahman Adini is really inclining to this affair of division and hizbiya and bias partisanship and causing fitna, is the bayan that Abdurrahman Adini shortly came after with, called, he wrote a bayan, called Ta'liqat al radiya He wrote some comments, and I'll read it to you, and also I'll play an audio where he acknowledges it these are, uh, himself. Already everything has been documented, everything is written, recorded. There's already uh, about 600 pages written proving the Hizbi of Abdurrahman Adini in detail, but I'm just clarifying it here in brief. And from the things that uh, Abdurrahman Adini wrote therein, is that he says, فَإِنِّي أُسَجِّلُ شَهَادَةً تَدَيُّنًا أَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ سَيَسْأَلُنِي عَنْهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ سَتُكْتَبُ شَهَادَتُهُمْ وَيُسْأَلُونَ He says, I will record here a testimony. Uh, from a religious point of view, and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask me on the Day of Judgment concerning it. So he says, فَأَقُولُ فِيهَا I say, I say therein, أقسم بالله العظيم أنني لا أعرف منذ طلبت العلم إلى الآن أحدا He says I swear by Allah that I do not know of anyone from the time I sought knowledge till now ممن ينسب إلى العلم والصلاح the one who, from who ascribes to knowledge and righteousness أشد فجورا في الخصومة وحقدا وعظم كذبا someone greater in wrongdoing in, in arguments and having malice and also as a greater of a liar and deception murawagatan wa makran and plots min Yahya ibn Ali al-Hajuri then Yahya ibn Ali al-Hajuri from the beginning of the time he saw knowledge to all the way till now he doesn't know anyone as a greater liar or greater in wrongdoing or malice than Yahya ibn Ali al-Hajuri So, with all of this, he's saying that 
he doesn't know all this yet during the the ijtima'at these gatherings with the mashayikh he at the very beginning he displays that he's against anyone speaking ill of the sheikh and then later on he comes with this testimony so this either shows that he's been affected with those people Arafat and them to say these transgressive words and these are words of extremism and we'll read the sheikh's response to it so sheikh says la'alla abdurrahman la yazalu yahfaz an shaykhina rahimahullah so perhaps abdurrahman does not cease to memorize those words from sheikh mubil that he used to say repeatedly al kadhib ruknun min arkan al hizbiya lying is a pillar from the pillars of hizbiya wa hadhi al ayman al mughallada he says these dramatic oaths that he's taken that he doesn't know someone, anyone from since he sought knowledge who ascribes to uh, ilm and righteousness greater in wrongdoing uh, and also of lying and deception than himself, than the Shaykh He says this sh- sh- yani is from the proofs that Abdurrahman Adini he himself has fell into wrongdoing and lying. And he, the Sheikh said uh, that all these groups that the Sufi, the Shia, the Mu'tazila, Hizb al-Tahrir, Ikhwan al-Muslimin all these people, he said, I am worse than them in lying and wrongdoing and deception in the, in the sight of Abdurrahman Adini he said, even what about Abu al-Hassan al-Ma'ribi and all these Hizbiyin he said, I am worse than them all, so this shows you this is from what the stages that Abdurrahman Adini he went from to another, and this is through the bad company uh, that he had of Hani bin Burayk and these individuals that corrupted him. And even I'll give you some words that uh, Abdurrahman Adini acknowledged even in audio later on. <laughs> So he said, uh, he was mentioning a bunch of fitnas that came, and he said, the fitna of Hajuri came, and Allah kept me firm, all praise due to Allah. So he says the affair of the Marquez, open the Marquez, was just an excuse for Sheikh to spill out what he had in his chest uh, for us. And this is uh, very shocking because Sheikh was from the people that praise you. There's even the audios that your followers, they share up until now, of words of praise for Sheikh for you. And yet he's saying these words that Sheikh was, is, and we read earlier how polite he was and making dua for him and just requesting for him just to admit his wrong so these people don't use it as a way, like Ali Hudayfi, Arafat, to build a fitna by way of it, and which they end up doing because of Abdurrahman Adini's persistence. <laughs> He mocks in a sarcastic way, saying that Shaykh said, Hizbiya, it's a new Hizbiya, be careful. And that he's bought tapes. And in reality, we've seen the, the division that it caused and the bias, uh, partisanship that was divided. People that we were used to revise Quran with, we knew the moment he came upon your ideology of your support, he became a different person, boycotting. Uh, to a point some of them even got physical. If we were to mention that this approach that they did was wrong and it caused division and warning and even going on websites of Abu Hassan Ma'ribi looking for points, old points of 2001, 2002, of these times from these individuals or even before and after to find points against Sheikh Yahya to add onto their websites that are anonymous and use it as a 
platform for the refutations. All of that, uh, this is a form of hisbiya. <laughs> So here he mentions that at that time he responded to Sheikh Yai, refuted him back. And we, we see in the clarifications of the Mashayikh how he was in front of the Mashayikh, that he was admitting that, uh, or he was saying, calling for unity, and he's saying that he frees himself from anyone that has fanaticism towards him or to other than him and also that he in another wording uh, another ijtima of Hudayda the gathering there that was documented he says uh, the last ijtima I free myself from those who uh, do ta'in of Shaykh or against the Maj but yet here uh, he's saying that he was refuting them and uh, he was saying words we'll see more <laughs> And he said, from what he said, is that I do not know of anyone that is greater in deception and also in filth, he says, khubthan, and also in lying than Yahya ibn Ali al Hajuri. So all this is different. Let's read the bayan again of what he wrote at the Ijtima of Hudayda in front of the Mashayikh and, and compare it to what he has said. So here are the exact words from the Ijtima in Hudayda, uh, 1429, the first month on the fifth day. Abdurrahman Adani writes, فَإِنِّي أَبْرَى إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنْ كُلِّ إِثَارَ وَطَعْنٍ دِدَّ مَرْكِزْ دَمَّاجْ وَدِدَّ الشِّيْخِ يَحْيَى وَمَنْ فَعَلَ شَيْئًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّمَا يُمَثِّلُ نَفْسَهُ وَلَا يُمَثِّلُونِ Free myself from every chaotic behavior and also reviling against the, the markers of the Maj and reviling Sheikh Yahya. And he said, whoever does that, then he's only representing himself and he's not representing me. And then you can hear on that audio, he says something else, that he was actually doing ta'an. He was saying that I don't see anyone more in greater in filth and lying. And that he's saying well, boastfully, yes, I refuted them. And that i would seen them greater in deception. So the, these are the stages that he went through so people can understand how it escalated to where it went. Also another thing is that he was working with individuals that prior to the fitna, he was against them and he spoke ill of them. This is another thing of his bia. That you his bia, it makes people have wala bara even with people that they are initially not with, just for the sake of this whole agenda that they're upon. <laughs> So he's speaking about Yasin al Adini, Abu al Abbas. It's known, we all knew this in the match, that they didn't get along and he used to speak bad about them. And here he even says that I, it was known, known in the match that Abu al Abbas had tay, you know, that he was uh, someone that had recklessness with him and heedlessness. <laughs> and that he had with him self-amazement, and it caused him bad manners. He says that if, uh, the proof for that was that when we would walk in the Maj and if we would give salams, you wouldn't hide, you don't hear no, any response from him. He says that he would, if he would pass by you, he wouldn't uh, raise his head to give salam to his brothers. This is something noticed and observed. The question arises, why work with some, some this type of person all those years just against Sheikh Yahya, just... <laughs> and 
So here's a clip where Abdul Rahman Adani mentions what he knew about Ali Huzayfi prior. That Sheikh Mubbil Rahimullah disciplined this man. And here Abdul Rahman Adani mentions that he was a fitna maker even in the time of uh, the Marquis of Sheikh Mubbil. And yet we know that he worked with this man and his likes and his companions with against Sheikh Yahya and Damaj. So not only Ali Hudayfi, but a group of them, and people that we knew that were with him later on in this fitna. And as Sheikh Mubal called these individuals, he gave them a particular name, Ashab al-Manhaj, the Manhaj guys. That these people were known to be extreme. And yet they were extreme later on. Before even the fitna of Abdurrahman Adini and the whole affair that transpired in Yemen, Ali Hudayfi used to warn from Damaj. And later on he became from your closest of companions, of things that were that started off by just saying that he's wrong the approach of tasjil, of this approach that you guys did in the institute that's already established, to come and divide his people when their people were united. And this was known that some of these people, they would gather, and in, uh, like for example, Yasin Adini, when he heard one day Sheikh Yaha was sick, he said, Allah yushfi. Uh, not Allah Yishri. He didn't say, "May Allah cure him." He said, "May Allah grant him death." You know, these are this is the level of hatred and malice. But they all unite and work with each other. I seen this, and when I went to Ma'bar, I seen this with various of how they were supporting one another, despite they know about the errors. But they all united just uh, to go against Sheikh Yahya and uh, supposedly the Maj. So this is the Hizbiyya that happened. And the sad part, with Sheikh warning him from all these uh, corrupted individuals such as Arafat and Hadim and Buraik, later on, the Abdurrahman Adini, after they, were, they got what they needed of causing so much ruckus in Yemen, of trying to disfigure the image of the Maj, and then later on, the Mashaykh of Yemen, they once they got what they wanted, they they put Abdurrahman Adini next, and he was on the hot seat, where they got some of the same mashayah who were they used to speak against Sheikh Yahya. They got him, uh, got those mashayah to speak about Abdurrahman Adini. And I'll read here some of the things that they've put out. Put out, they got to obey the Jabari to call Abdurrahman Adini Mughaffal, heedless. And he says, this is the audio, you can find it online. He says, لا يصلح للدعوة. And he says, he's not suitable for da'wa. And to this level, they've uh, they got all these people that they were using before to refute Sheikh Yaha, to refute Abdurrahman Adini. They got Abdullah Bukhari to refute him and to warn that anyone uh, remains in the Marquis of Fush of the Marquis of Abdurrahman Adini, also they, they said they got Sheikh Rabia to call, say that he's worse than Hajuri and that he's makir, he's a plotter. And even they quote from Muhammad bin Hadi saying that Abdurrahman Adini uh, did not fully quote me correctly. Uh, so these people, and this was in the year that he put out in uh, 1436 of Hijri, Shahr al-Sha'ban, the, the third day of Laylat al-Khamis. So these are what they put out. And this is the sad part when you rely upon individuals that Sheikh was warning you from all the time that these people were up for something as a fitna. And with all of this, when you've seen it, he still didn't want to admit that Hani bin Buraik, his condition has become clear now. And uh, in Yemen, that this person has become a, someone inclined to Khawarij mentality. Arafat has known how much fitna he has caused in Saudi Muhammad Ghalib in Emirat. These individuals, it's known their fitna, and with all of that, 
during those times when he was going back and forth with them, he did not admit that these people were she the same individual Sheikh was warning me from, and the same people I relied upon in this whole division in Yemen. So this is uh, the sad part, and no one is going to disagree that the beginning of this fitna started from Abdurrahman Adini. As is documented, even the, the followers of Abdurrahman Adini have stated on some of their websites that this fitna came from Abdurrahman Adini and he was in the wrong of it. And up until he died, he did not admit it, that he was in the wrong. And this is something that we should be uh, cautious, uh, be fully aware of. And we as, we're not uh, opening the door to uh, make it a habit to speak about the dead, but because of its needed and also the need of angle of clarification of truth from falsehood and to know the conditions of the people, this is very important that we clarify this. And his affair is with his Lord. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon him and to forgive him, but just clarifying his condition and how he died upon and how these other fitnas that were built upon it so people can understand. Also from the things that was a sad part of it was that these individuals that Abdurrahman Adini teamed up with and worked with later on end up refuting him with refutations that are detailed with points, quoting his statements uh, and sometimes using even some of the points from the students of Damaj that were refuting Abdurrahman Adini for although before they weren't using it when they're on the side of Abdurrahman, but later on they end up using these points, some of the aqeed, the mistakes that was critiqued against Abdurrahman Adini, they used it, or they said some of the statements that he said in uh, his classes that some of the Sahabas will be going into the hellfire, and that uh, supposedly he debated in front of Sheikh Rabia with this, and Sheikh Rabia advised them, so on and so forth, whatever they say, these are things that, these are the same people that he relied upon. They're not people that are advisors. But the students of Damaj at that time, they were people that advised them in private. Sheikh Jamil went to him in private. Sheikh Kamal Adani advised them. They all sat. Everything was private. But these people, they used him for a particular affair of dividing and causing all this division where they got power in Aden. And what they, when they were done with him, they ended up using the same points of the students of Damaj upon Abdurrahman Adani. And I'll give you an example. Salah Fintush, he has a uh, reputation called Hadam Ta'usil al Bid'i in the Abdurrahman ibn Umar ibn Mar'i. And he lists so many things, even things that were mentioned by students of the Maj, that the principles of Jarwa Ta'adil, that Abdurrahman Adini had uh, some corrupted principles with him, and even various of mistakes. It's very lengthy quoting from him from various places and doing niqash, debate with him. This is the sad part that these were, some many of these were points that were given advice from the students of the Maj and with all of that no recantation to the point that some of his own followers when they break up from him, they use it against them. So just to clarify that Abdurrahman Adini, uh, the state that he died in was uh, this affair. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon uh, all of us and to guide us to that which is correct and uh, to learn, make us learn from these affairs. This is a sad affair for sure. Shaitan benefits by dividing the ummah.